In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use Excel's subtotal tool to analyze your data. I've got some data here that shows the names and job titles of the employees of a company that has offices in a number of different cities and each office has a number of different departments and we know the salary for each staff member. Now before you use the subtotal tool you need to organize your data and you have to sort it by those columns that you are going to use to subtotal the data. I'm going to subtotal by the office column and the department column so I need to sort the data by those two columns. Now to sort the data I just click anywhere within the data and on my data tab I'm going to choose the sort tool. The sort tool is automatically detected that my data has a header row. Do check that it, Excel has correctly done that. There's a tick there in the box to show that it's detected that. And it's selected the rest of the data. First thing I need to do is to tell it that I want to sort by the office column in A to Z ascending alphabetical order. Then I want to add a level because I then want to sort by the department column again in A to Z order. Clicking OK performs a sort and you can see that the data is sorted by those two columns. As I scroll down, you can see that Amsterdam changes to Berkeley and Berkeley changes to Birmingham. And then within those groups, the various different departments are arranged in alphabetical order. Now to insert my subtotals, again, I just have to make sure that I have a cell selected within my data, which I have. And on the data tab, again, I'll just switch on the subtotal tool. It's asking me at each change in, and that refers to the column by which I'm going to subtotal. And the first column I want to subtotal by is the office column. So I choose office there. I've got a choice of a number of different calculations. I'm going to choose some, but you can see that there are various other ones there. It wants to know which column to do the calculation on and it's correctly chosen salary because that's the only column in my data that has uh, numerical values in it so uh, that's okay I'll leave it as that you can choose whichever one you want a couple of questions at the bottom here do I want to replace the current subtotals well at this point there aren't any but this will be important later on Do I want a page break between groups? That's quite a useful feature. It can, after it's inserted a subtotal, it can then put a page break in, which means that if you want to print out your data with each group on a separate page, it can do that automatically for you. And finally, do I want a summary below my data, a grand total? Well, yes, I do. So I'll leave that as it is and click OK. As I scroll down here, you'll see that where Amsterdam changes to Berkeley, it's inserted a total for that particular group. And similarly, where Berkeley changes to Birmingham, it's inserted a subtotal for Berkeley, and so on down the sheet. At the left of the worksheet, you'll see some buttons and some vertical lines and that is known as outlining. It's a way of hiding and revealing data when you are summarizing it. There are three outline levels here, one, two, and three, and we're currently viewing level three, which is all our data. If I click the number two button, you'll see that just the office subtotals are shown, and 
the number one button shows just the grand total. That's a very large number, so I need to just widen the column a little bit so that you can see what that is. I can take it back to the number three level. Now I want to insert a set of subtotals for department. Again, checking that I have a cell selected in the data. I'll open the subtotal tool. What I need to do here is change office to department. I want the same calculation of the same column. But this time, I don't want to replace the current subtotals. If I were to leave that tick there, it would discard the subtotals that it had made for the offices and replace them with department subtotals. But I want to see both. So I'm going to remove that tick and click OK. And there are my department subtotals. If I scroll down, you'll see that there's a subtotal for each department within each office. And it's retained the office subtotals. Over at the left here, we now have an additional level of outlining. This time level 4 shows all our details. Level 3 shows the department subtotals. Level 2 shows the office subtotals and level 1 the grand totals. And again, each level can be expanded if you want to see the data that makes up the subtotal. Now something that's quite important to know if you want to maybe copy these subtotals and put them somewhere else is that if you were to just select what you can see and copy it to maybe another worksheet or perhaps a, a, a Word document or an email, when you paste, instead of pasting just what you thought you had copied, it's pasted all the data. And there's a reason for that. I'll just undo here and go back to where we were. The way that the subtotals tool has created this list is by hiding the rows in between. And you can see that because the row numbers here are not consecutive. But when you select a block of data like this and copy, you're actually copying the hidden rows. What we need to do is just copy what we can see. And there's an easy way to do that. Select the cells that you can see in the same way, but then go to the Find and Select tool on the Home tab and choose Go To Special. And that dialog box offer you, offers you visible cells only. Choose that and click OK. Now you can copy and you can see that the dotted lines look very confused here, but that's because it's copying just what you can see. Now when we go to the other sheet, we can paste and you've pasted what was visible on the other sheet. Now when you've finished working here, you'll probably want to remove the subtotals. And that's just as easy as it was to put them in. Select a cell in the data. On the data tab, go to the subtotal tool and choose remove all. And we're back where we were. Well, in fact, we're almost back where we were because the data in front of us is now sorted and it wasn't sorted previously. If you want to revert to the way the data was originally, one way to do that is to close without saving and then reopen the file. 
that's fine as long as you remember to save before you started doing your subtotaling because otherwise you might lose some work that you've done. So I have a way of dealing with that uh, which in order to show you I must actually sh shut down this workbook and reopen it. So I'm going to close that without saving. And let's pretend that we hadn't done any of that work. So we open up our workbook here. Now before I start to sort this data, I'm going to insert a column. It doesn't matter where you insert it, but I'm doing it at the beginning of my data here. I'll call it ID for want of a name. I'm just going to type a number one in the first cell. I'll double click the little autofill button. Now I don't want a one in every cell, so I'll go to the autofill options and choose fill series. And so what I've done here is I've numbered each row. If I go right to the bottom, you'll see that each row of data is numbered. Now that numbering actually is now part of the data. It's not just a row number here that Excel gives you. So when I sort my data, no matter how complex the sort is that I perform, I can always revert back to it by sorting by this column that I inserted here. So you can see the numbers are all jumbled up. If I just sort A to Z, I've now got it back into the original order. And when you're done with it, you can just throw that column away. And you haven't lost any of your data. Well, that's the end of this particular demonstration. If you want to see some more of my work, I've got lots of tutorials on Excel, Access and VBA at my website, fontstuff.com.